So when people make such claims on the internet or all over the world, what they are really saying, don't follow Abu Hanifa, don't follow Shafi, don't follow Imam Malik, don't follow Imam Muhammad bin Hanbal, follow Sahih Hadith only. But oh, you don't know whether that Hadith is really Sahih. You don't know whether that Hadith is, is mansukh or not. And even if it is classified as Sahih, it's not been classified as Sahih by Rasulullah. It's been classified as Sahih by other muhaddisun. So if you're going to follow another man's opinion at the end of the day, then what's wrong with following the opinion of a man whose opinion has already been followed about for 12 centuries? So we can't get away from the fact that all of us, all of us are blind followers and we have no choice but to be blind followers. Because if somebody says this is Sahih Hadith, how are you going to guarantee 100% it is Sahih? It's not the Prophet didn't say it, another man said it. And Imam Bukhari, Rahimahullah, for example, in his compilation, there are eight, nine chains. Imam Bukhari didn't meet them all. He only had to base his judgment on what he heard, hearsay. So you have to place your trust blindly on Imam Abu Hanifa or Albani or other Muhaddisun or Bin Baz that what he is saying is Sahih. And is it really Sahih? You can argue all night and all day till Qiyamat and you will go round and round. We've got no choice but to place blind trust. <coughs> Yeah, assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Peace be upon you all. Um, let me see. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, peace. Uh, Muhammad Kamal Deen. Uh, David Ismail, Alajat Al Mahmoud, uh, yeah, Beni Shansar, peace be upon you all. Uh, thank you all for coming. And uh, this is to another stream concerning the uh, hadith rejectors, right? <laughs> uh, this, this is going to be an interesting topic to discuss concerning the hadith rejectors. Okay, so let a minute, let me try to adjust the table here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, the topic is the hadith rejectors. Uh, as you've been hearing many a times, uh, you hear the scholars, the preachers, the the, the Sunnis, the, all of them, uh, You understand as most of the mainstream people who keep saying hadith rejectors the hadith rejectors the hadith rejectors aha uh salam -huh. ras gombosco yeah peace uh yeah thank you very much alaja atal mahmoud yeah thank you for the support uh yeah brother eddie you're welcome salam peace be upon you all thank you all for making it a date today as well uh, as I said, the topic is hadith rejectors, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So, Barahu min ash rajim I seek refuge with God against the accursed devil. Woman ahsana kaulan min man da'a ila Allahi wa amila salihan wa kala inna li min al-Muslimin. And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and acts righteous and says, "Indeed, I am of the submitters, that is Muslims." Hazi sabili adu ila la ala basiratin ana wa manitabani wa subana lahi wa ma ana min al mushurikin. This is my way I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me in glory be to Allah, for I am not among the mushriks, that is the idolaters. Al hakum mi rabbikum famansha fali umin wa mansha fali akfu. The truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills let him believe, and whoever wills let him disbelieve. Nobody is forced. Bear that in mind. Ya you are Lazina Amanu Takullah wa Kunuma as Sadikin. Oh, you who believe, beware of God and be with those who are honest. That is, who are truthful to themselves, who are honest. Be with those people. Don't be with a group who are liars, who are deceivers, you know, who are phonies, who are fake, who are traitors. Don't be with such people. 
you have to be with people who are honest, right? If something is wrong, they will tell you. If something is right, they will tell you. Be with those uh, groups, especially if they are believers. But you have to be aware of God. Good. So as I said, today's topic is to talk about the Hadith projectors, uh, which, which is a, a, a theme or an anthem that we all hear all over from the mainstream, from the sectarians, from the scholars. You keep hearing if they are in opposition with the Quran, they keep saying Hadith rejectors, Hadith rejectors. So I'm here to refute such an argument that uh, actually uh, somebody who follows the Quran should be the one to say Hadith rejector, not, not the vice versa, right? Uh -huh. So before I go to the topic itself, uh, let me go through some questions, a couple of questions I was asked during the week. Uh, last week, I couldn't do my live lectures because I was occupied and busy with other activities. So I couldn't uh, come for the program, right? Uh -huh. So last week, I was asked some couple of questions. And let me see. Uh, somebody asked me concerning naming ceremony, right? It says, what, what does the Quran describe about naming ceremony? How to name our children? Do we need to slaughter an animal to name our children? There is no such evidence in the Quran where God asks anybody to slaughter an animal in order to name their kids. It doesn't exist. Uh, as for naming ceremony, does it have to be a, a, a form of ritual that we all have to follow as a full step? No, it doesn't exist. None, none existed with, throughout the, with the prophet. We saw how Abraham named his children. We saw how uh, Nana Mariam uh, uh, named Isa. We saw how Adam was named by God. We saw how, uh, you know, uh, a lot of I'll give some of the examples as time goes on. We saw all, how all that those ones happened. It has nothing to do with uh, slaughtering an animal or a, to perform a ritual specifically to name a kid. No. So then the main example I'm bringing is in chapter three, verse thirty-six, right? Uh, that is Surah Al Ali, uh, Ali Imran, right? Chapter three, verse thirty-six, concerning this issue. Uh -huh. So that was uh, uh, the wife of Amram when she gave that to Maryam. Uh, let's see the procedure she has to go through to, to name. Uh, when you go to Quran chapter, okay, let me see if I can share the screen to the verse. Then I will break the verse down for people to understand what he said, right? Okay, let me share the screen. Uh, Quran chapter 3. Verse 36. <clears throat> Chapter 3, verse 36. Yeah. So then it's uh it's it started by saying it says, Falamma wadat ha kalat rabbi inni wadatu ha untha. Wallahu alamu bima wa wadaat. Walaisa Zakaru Kel Untha. Then he says, Wa inni Samaituha Mariama. Then he says, Wa inni Uizuha Bika. Wa Zuriataha Mina Shaitanu Raji. Now, what is the verse telling us here? I want to break it down uh, as, as easy as possible so that uh, for those who don't know what the Arabic says, can and uh, can get to hear what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, somebody says the voice is cracking. Uh, guys, can you hear me sounding clearly? I want to be sure it's not on my side. Uh, let me, give me a signal if you can hear me sound and clearly. Someone just wrote that the voice is cracking. So just give me a signal so that I can move on. Uh, with the program. Yeah, someone just said the voice is cracking. So kindly check for me. Uh, Sharif says perfect for me. Uh, and sometimes be rest assured for people who are watching me straight from Ghana. Sometimes your the network might be, you know, disturbing you over there. Uh -huh. So th this is one issue I try to fix. I, I, I speed up the internet to, to get everything fixed up. So I hope everything is clear, right? Uh-huh. 
So, so far, two people say it's sounding clear. So I think, David Ismail, you have to disconnect it and come back. You understand? Or restart your phone. Because if you have other apps open, it will slow the process of your phone. If you're watching me from a phone. So try to close every program from your phone and restart your phone. You understand? Uh -huh. So that you can get to watch me in a better way. Yeah. Okay, thank you all for, for the response. Yes. Elijah Atal Mahusi is perfect and clear as Gombosko, Sharif Karim, Emmanuel Ajilo, Mohamed Kamal. They all say it's good, right? So it's good. Uh -huh. So let me not lose the track of uh, what is being said, right? So that is Quran chapter 3, verse 36. And when she gave birth, that is the wife of Amram. You can start from the context of verse 35 or 34. Coming down, chapter 3, verse 34, 35. But I'm reading 36, right? Aha, uh -huh. yeah. Liman uh, Imrana, salam. He also said it's all good. Yeah, salam, Abdul Samad. Aha, so and when she gave birth to her, so she gave birth to Maryam, right? She said, Lord, she's invoking God. She says, Lord, I have given birth to a female. When we say Untha in Arabic, it's a female, right? And God was aware of what she gave birth to right and the male is not like the female when we say zakar the zakaru or zakar in arabic it means male when you say untha is female in arabic so the male is not like the female right and then she said i have named her maryam that is mary the popular name the uh, other version called mary so that is how she named her so she invoked god and then she told god what she has done and I seek protection for her with you and for her descendants against the accursed devil. So this is an example we can all take and partake, which I all I did it for my kids as well. When my first daughter was given birth to, this is the same type of process we went through. And I made the mother seek refuge for, for, for her daughter. I did it as well. And the same procedure I did for my son. And I made the mother seek refuge for, for, for the son. And then... I did likewise. You understand? Because we, we take the, from the examples we see from the Quran and implement it to our lives. Because Quran chapter 4, verse 26, God is to guide you to the examples of those who have come before you so that he can guide you through those examples, right? Uh -huh. So we can see the evidence in Quran chapter 3, verse 36. There is no such thing as slaughtering an animal or you have to take the child to the mosque for the imam to name the kid, or you have to call on your grandparents or your father to say, hey, I need your blessings. You have to come and give my child the name, which is no, no, no such thing. You can actually name, even your wife can decide to name your, your kid. It doesn't matter. It doesn't necessarily have to come from the father. <laughs> it's just a mutual understanding. If the wife wants a name for a kid, fine. So be it. It can be. There's nothing wrong as to only the man has to give name or only the father or grandfather has to give name or no no aha uh -huh. so don't limit it to 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 a certain concept that god hasn't given you so we saw here the mother of mariam named mariam she says i named her she didn't say the father named her i named her mariam you see so by naming mariam she didn't have to slaughter any animal there wasn't any instruction by God that you have to slaughter an animal. As a matter of fact, when the mother of Musa, salam, Moses, when she gave birth to Moses, you can read Surah al Namal, chapter 27, or Surah al Qasas, chapter 28. Read it. There is no such thing as when Moses was giving birth to, the mother has to go and slaughter an animal. She was even keeping him in secret. She doesn't want anybody to know that Moses was giving birth because if Fra'auna finds out that there's a baby around, he will kill the baby. So she has to cast the baby to a, a sea nearby. So that it was taken uh, uh, by the sea to the house of Pharaoh. And then he was adopted as a son by Pharaoh, you see. So there was no such thing as slaughtering an animal or following a particular ritual when you give birth. But at the end, who did Moses become? He became a prophet. <laughs> so I don't see the notion why people think there's something as a naming ceremony whereby days have to be set one week they will say one week or two weeks before they do the circumcision mind you there's no such thing as circumcision in the dean of god it doesn't exist it was a formulated thing so if it there was why do you even have to do it in the eighth day or one week or so when the concept comes from the bible go and read the book of genesis uh, abraham according to the so-called uh, book they call torah that book i don't believe that's the real torah 
But according to the so-called book, Abraham was 99 years when he had circumcision. His son, Ishmael, was 13 years when he had circumcision. So why are you doing it to your little kids? Even if it's coming from God. The one you are following his footsteps, he did it when he was 99 years. Why don't you also wait till you are 50 years or so? <laughs> it doesn't come from God. Quran doesn't confirm such acts, right? Mm -hmm. So bear that in mind. So we see the issue of naming ceremony. Also, when you take Quran chapter 19, verse 22 to 27, we saw Maryam. When she gave birth to Isa, alayhi salam, Jesus, she gave she she already had the name from the Jib Jibril who gave her the name that can be given to him. And she gave the son the name and then she had it. When she conceived him, she gave birth later or she took him to her family house. There is no such thing as a ritual way of slaughtering an animal before the kid will be named. It doesn't exist. So we don't see such thing in the Quran. When you give birth to a kid, just name the kid. If you want to thank God in your own way, fine, that's up to you. If you decide to slaughter an animal just to thank God for that, what he has done, that, that's up to you. I'm not saying that is forbidden, no. But it does. it's not a ritualistic thing that you have to go through a particular process to name your kid. You see? Uh -huh. So bear that in mind. <sighs> yeah. So let's move on. And then somebody asked me the issue concerning chapter 4, verse 136, concerning uh, uh, belief. That is, we can say faith. Uh, so I'll share the screen again. I'll take you to Quran chapter 4, verse 136. And let's see what the verse says before I move on to the main topic of discussion, inshallah. So Quran, Surah to nisa Then I take you to chapter 4. That is chapter 4. Then I take you to 136. And I share the screen. And let's see what it says, right? Uh -huh. Yes, so Quran chapter 4, verse 136. Yeah. Uh, just a second. Yeah, so let's move on. Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 4, verse 136. Uh, let's see what the verse says. Surah to Nisa. And I want people to understand a certain notion of belief. When we say uh, believe, right? You should understand how belief works. Uh, the word believe is different from follow. When we say you are following something, there's a difference, right? I can believe in something, but I'm not actually following it. The concept of the Quran is to believe and follow, not only believe. You believe and follow, right? So I'm going to break it down. Then we understand what it says. So he says, Ya you lazina amanu. Then he says, Aminu billahi wa rasulihi. Then he says, Walikitabi lazi nazzala ala rasuli. Then he says, Walikitabi lazi anzala min kablu. Waman yakfuru billahi wa malaikatihi. Wakutubihi, Warusulihi, Waliyaumila Ahir, ah, Fakadala Dalalan Baida. Now, what the verse is telling us is very interesting. The simplest form of what God is telling us is, Oh, you who believe, meaning you believe in God and you believe in the verses of God. So, God is talking to the believers here. So, He says, Believe, that is, you put your trust in God, believe in God, His messenger. And the book which he revealed to his messenger. Right? So apart from believing in the messenger, you have to believe in the book which he revealed to his messenger. As well as the book which was revealed before. You understand? Before the book you are believing in now. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So as well as the book which what which was revealed before the book given to that particular messenger. So God says, and whoever disbelieves in God, that is number one. Because God is the main concept of the deen. He is the main subject. So if you disbelieve in God, <laughs> then everything is kaput. So whoever disbelieves in God, Allah, 
his angels because from god you move to angels there's no way you can say i believe in god but it, i don't believe in the concept of angels then you are out of coverage areas then number three his books yes god has sent down books you read it doesn't mean he sent it as uh, uh, like uh physically from the sky and it's coming down as a book no it's came and it's re written down because it's inspired by god and it's written down and whatever does whatever doesn't come from god you find in it numerous contradictions right then he says his messengers he sent down messengers and the messengers is not only only human beings angels are also messengers so quran chapter 22 verse 75 he chooses angels among humans a people and then what angels right so you have to believe in his messengers so if you disbelieve in god that is number one in his angels number two his books number three his messengers number number four and the last day number five then you have strayed far astray you are not only astray but you are straight far astray so the concept of this verse is just to give credence to what we believe in concerning god now the notion of believe i can believe in a book previous book that god has sent down but that doesn't necessarily mean i'm following that book so for instance i believe god sent down books in the past i believe i only believe yes i believe you understand but i'm not following them i'm following the quran do you get my point because that is the truth and it confirms whatever is in the past. So whatever you see in the Quran is also a repetition of what was said in the path, past. So that is why I'm following the Quran. Because God asked me to. Quran chapter 7 verse 3 and Quran chapter 39 verse 55. Right? So I'm following the best of what God has revealed. So Quran chapter 4 verse 136 is just to place emphasis on how to believe in God and whatever he has revealed to you. That is the main concept, right? Uh -huh. So let's put that aside. So the concept of... Uh, okay, let me respond to this. Uh -huh. The concept of hadith rejectors. When we say the hadith rejectors, what is this concept uh, exactly? And what, where does it evolve? The concept of hadith rejectors existed from the Quran. It's not outside the Quran. When we say hadith rejector. It is the concept of the Quran. It is not the concept of the mushriks. So understand this. Uh, Sharif Karim says, does, does belief include the destiny as well? Uh, I don't see that as a criteria where God put destiny in this criteria I just mentioned. What can make you a disbeliever and a believer? I don't see the criteria of destiny, Kader, there. It doesn't mention Qadr in chapter 4, verse 136. It never mentioned that, right? Of course, if you are a believer, there's a notion of destiny, right? If you read chapter 57, verse 22 to 23, you will see the notion of destiny. But it is not a criteria that God set your faith upon by force. No. So understand that concept, Sharif. Okay, so when we say the Hadith rejectors, I take you to Quran chapter 68, verse 44 where does the concept of the hadith rejected start from did it start from outside the quran or did it start from within the quran and when we say the hadith what is intended by this what is the hadith itself i'm going to break that down for you so that you understand the concept that anybody who is telling you you are an hadith rejecter you should be laughing at him <laughs> you should be laughing when somebody says you are a hadith rejecter just laugh don't get offended <laughs> uh -huh. so i take you to quran chapter 68 verse 44 right and i make it easy for you to understand this concept and don't go with the flow when a foolish person is tagging you as hadith rejector just laugh at them don't get offended at all so quran chapter 68 verse 44 this is as simple as a b c d right and i'm going to help break it down so that whenever you encounter such people and you interact in, in, in an argumentative way with them don't stress yourself too much right in order to justify the means that oh uh, you know some hadith when they make sense I, i'll agree with them if they don't make sense you know then i put it out no don't fall to their trap they are playing a game with you if you follow the trend you are also a mushrik 
Quran chapter 6, verse 121. When you obey these devils and their, their whims and desires in arguments, when you obey them, according to God, you also become a mushrik. Yes, Quran chapter 6, verse 121. If you obey those the devils are inspiring to argue with you, whatever is being said, and you say, oh, I agree, I compromise in this, you become a mushrik. Bear that in mind. Good. So Quran chapter 68, verse 44. The simplicity of this verse I put on the screen is just to tell you that God says, Fazarni woman you kezibu be has al hadith. Fazarni woman you kezibu be has al hadith. You see, so God says, Leave me and whoever rejects this hadith. So you see the concept of hadith rejecter, where it comes from. It evolved from the Quran. But the title I use is the Hadith Rejecter. So automatically, what is the Hadith? Check the verse. It mentioned Bihaz al Hadith, this Hadith. And the Hadith, the, it is a noun. And it is mentioned in, a, in the form of a marifa. When we say marifa, it is a definite article in English. We say the Hadith. But because the word this is there, you don't need to mention the, 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 the word there. So you say this hadith. You don't say this the hadith. No. So God says, leave me and whoever rejects or denies this hadith. So it is this hadith which is the main subject. It is not that garbage hadith. <laughs> so bear that in mind, please. There is a difference. Uh -huh. So bear that in mind. Fazarni woman you kezibu be has al hadith. Sanas tad rijuhum min hai sulaya alemun. So God says, and we will gradually advance them. Huh? We will advance them from where they do not know. Yes, and this is this advancement is not a good thing, it's a bad thing. If you read verse 45, it will tell you the advancement God is telling you. Because he has set a formidable trap for them. And he will deal with them exceptionally. Yes. So the correct hadith rejectors are the mushriks. Like the Sunni, the Shia, the Tijaniyas, the Ahmadiyas. The, you call them. They are the correct hadith rejectors. Uh -huh, because the Quran is the original hadith. Whatever hadith they have is fake hadith. Are you, are you with me? And I will break it down for you to understand the concept. It's, it's simple. It is not a big deal. It is a, something you can understand with simplicity and no need to stress yourself at all. As I said, Quran chapter 68, verse 44 to verse 45, God says, so leave me with whoever denies or rejects this hadith. That is the Quran, this hadith, not that hadith. So this hadith, then God says, we will gradually advance them from where they do not know. And what is the advancement? Read verse 45. And I, God, will detect for them. Indeed, my scheme is formidable, is solid. Mateen, and God will deal with them. Because they deny this hadith, not that hadith. Good. So that is the concept of hadith rejectors. The hadith rejectors. And we see the evidence in Quran chapter 68, verse 4, right? Uh -huh. uh, Muhammad Abdulaziz El Alechi, uh, based on your question, when you add when you check Quran chapter 57, verse 22, Quran chapter 57, verse 22 to verse uh 23, right? Yeah, Quran chapter 57, verse 22 to 23. You can check it. Whatever God has written down as a destiny is not to be changed. It might occur. It has to occur because it has been written down. So you don't expect God to take a, an eraser to erase and then write it again and say, okay, uh, here I think I've made a mistake. So let me wipe it out and write it well again. Uh -huh. When we say destiny, it has nothing to do with your free will and choice. Uh, for instance... If I'm destined to die after 100 years, 
it's unchangeable. It has to be 100 years. If I'm destined to be born in Ghana, I cannot change that. It's a destiny. If, uh, if it is destined for rain to fall, the rain must fall. If it is destined for earthquake to happen, it must happen. But nowhere in the Quran did God say he has destined uh, uh, for you to go to hell. No. No. It becomes your handwork. Because Quran chapter 39 verse 61, God says you will only be saved by your achievement on the day of judgment. So it is not by destiny that you will be saved. No. So people should understand how destiny works. If you check my full lecture on free will, I have it on my YouTube channel. It's called the free will. And I broke this down concerning destiny, right? People have misunderstood destiny, how it works. Uh -huh. So uh, destiny is not the, mainly the essential part of your faith. And the essential part of faith, I've already ex uh, explained that in Quran chapter 4, verse 136, right? Uh -huh. So let's move on with the discussion, right? So the concept of the Hadith rejectors, it started from chapter 68, verse what? verse 44 to 45 right uh -huh. okay so now you hear the mainstream muslim telling you mentioning the word hadith if you ask them to define the word hadith the hadith is a tradition based on reports that is narrations of the sayings and activities of the alleged uh, that they have alleged to the Prophet Muhammad and his companions. It's alleged or an allegation, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. The reason why I'm saying that because they cannot prove it 100%. It's not factual. And I will be playing Zakir Naik's video to break this concept down. And it's very laughable. For people who have watched this, this tape from the beginning, you understand what I meant. I played a video by one scholar called uh, Mumtaz al Haq. And he spoke about blind followers of Hadith, right? They are all blind followers. There is no one who is seen among them. All of them are blind. Right? So when we say Hadith, according to the mainstream Muslims, this is how they define Hadith. They will tell you Hadith is a tradition based on reports. Uh, just a second, sorry. Yeah, they will tell you hadith is a tradition based on reports of the sayings and activities of Prophet Muhammad and his companions. So this is hadith according to them. And this definition, there is no one single instance where you find it anywhere described by the Prophet himself, that he described hadith to be this way. Nowhere. Nowhere, as a matter of fact. No book on this earth did the Prophet himself describe hadith to mean this thing they are telling you, that hadith is a tradition, like it's a sunnah, based on reports uh, of the sayings and activities of Prophet Muhammad and his companions. So that is what hadith is about, according to the mainstream Muslims. Do you see the point? Aha. Uh -huh. So the answer is, ask them who defined this word for them. Who defined the word hadith to mean what, what they are telling you? They cannot answer that. Was it the prophet? The answer is no. The prophet never defined such a word for them. Uh, somebody, somebody, uh, somebody wrote a, a question here. Let me, uh, I wanted to skip it, but let me leave it. Uh, before that, I think Muhammad Gaddafi is, is saying something. He says, what are all conspiracy towards the Quran? They believe as, as Muslims and they, are, they don't fear God. Yeah, they don't fear, no. Rob, uh, uh, Robert, Robert Jones says, if God has already destined me to live for only 40 years, why do I need to pray for long life if I prefer living to 80 years. The matter, this matter of living long on earth is not your choice to make. For instance, your statement right now is like saying, God, let me not die in my life ever. Let me not die. 
whilst you know it goes contrary to the laws of God. According to God, every soul will taste death, right? And no soul knows how long it will live on earth. So it is not about you praying to God and say, God, I need long life. Okay, first of all, why do you need long life for? I give an example. If you are working and your boss gives you five hours to finish an assignment and you can finish it in three hours, why pray for more time? I don't understand. To do what? Okay, if you are on earth and you have, you have met the requirement of what you are here to do, why do you need more time? Why do you think in a racing game, athletes, somebody like Usain Bolt, can just finish a race of 100 meters in just 10 seconds? Huh? In just 10 seconds, he finished it. Why does he need more time to finish it? It is not about living long on earth. This is the concept I want people to understand. Stop wasting your time praying to God for long life. <laughs> he has already assigned how long you will stay on earth. And he has already assigned, destined the num the year you'll be born and the year you come into existence and the year you leave. He has already pre-arranged that. You understand? This is why good people can die young, bad people can die young. There is nowhere in the Quran God says, oh, if you are a good person, you live on, on earth very long time. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It's actually evil people with bad intention, they are praying for long life. I hope you get wisdom in what I'm saying. So you being a good person, it is not about, oh God, let me live on life long time. No, don't do that. No. <laughs> Why do you need long time for? It's just like if a race needs to be finished in 10 minutes and you are able to achieve the goal in finishing in five minutes, what do you need the rest of the time for? To do what? I would rather die and go to a place where, where death is not needed, where old age will not come to me, that is easier. That is better. Do you, do you get the point? Aha. Uh -huh. So, Robert Jones, your question is not a stupid question, but the wisdom is taken out of the question. And what I'm putting, I'm putting back the wisdom into your question. No need for you to pray for long life to be 80 years. <laughs> it's like praying to God to let you not die. You know it's impossible. So your prayer to live long on earth, will not change anything by the destiny. If it's destined that you are living for 40 years, your prayer will change nothing. How many people do you see in Africa praying day in, day night? Uh, God, let us live long life. What, is, what does the, their long life, what, what, what is it doing for them? What have they achieved? I don't get it. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly, Sharif Karim, exactly. You just said the right thing here. You understand? You just said the right thing here. Death is a blessing for a believer. It is the only way you can meet your Lord. Yes, because as a believer, why are you scared to die? <laughs> to be, because if you have your goals, you are a good person, you are a righteous person, wouldn't, wouldn't you be even scared that you, your life might turn around and you become an evil? So why, what are, why are you wasting your time on earth seeing you need long life? To do what? If it's your kids, you want to see them grow, remember, whether you like it or not, either you will die or your kids will die. Your parents, if it's them you want to live old age to see them uh, go old, it's either you will die first or they will die first. Because God has written the time, it's only to him. He doesn't disclose it to anybody. You understand? Uh -huh. So praying for long life is a waste of time. Throughout the Quran, you will never see any prophet of God or a messenger of God praying to God to give him long life. It doesn't exist. It's a waste of time. Yes. Aha, uh -huh. Merkra, you're here. Thanks. No, 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 no. Robert Jones, I agree with you. What the, the spring is wrong. I just answered that question right now. It's wrong to do that. Don't forget about what the majority of the people are doing. Quran chapter 6 verse 116. If you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead you from the way of God. God never asks you to play for a long life. So stop doing that. It's a waste of time. Uh -huh. Abdul Samad just pasted something. What is he saying? He says, the, this is the established way of Allah and then with those who passed on before, and you will not find in the way of Allah any change. Yes, that is not Allah. It doesn't change. Okay, let's move on so that I don't get uh, 
uh, you know, of the topic. Now, when you ask the mushriks, who defined the word hadith for them? It, it wasn't the prophet. Who give the laws and restrictions and then criteria of defining hadith and then arranging hadith? It wasn't the prophet. So I'm going to narrate one particular hadith for you. Uh, the book of Zud, right? Let me see what I can do. If I can put this on a notepad, then I enlarge it up so that people can see what I'm trying to show here. Uh, concerning hadith, uh, let me see. Here. Uh, I'm, I'll be delving into the Quran to break down the concept of hadith, what is meant by hadith, where hadith comes from, and how we got to this point today, right? I'll be breaking that point down so people will get to understand what hadith is all about. And when we say the hadith, it means the Quran. If somebody calls you hadith rejected, just laugh at them. The Quran is the proper hadith. So you are never an hadith rejecter. It is actually the Sunnis, the Shias, the Tijaniyas, the Mushriks, they are the hadith rejectors. Put that in the back of your mind. Good. I'll be breaking that concept down for you. You get to understand this point very easily without any complications. Right? Okay. Let me see. Why is this thing not coming here? So, Andalus. what is this okay try to increase the font and let's see what i can do with this uh, okay so i'm going to share the screen and let's let's read it together and let's see what the hadith says. Uh, let me share the screen and put the file here on the word. Okay, so that is it. When you go to their hadith book, that is the book of Zood and Softening Hearts. Huh? The book of Zud and Softening Hearts. Here, I highlight it. You see it on the page. Book of Zud and Softening Hearts. You find, find it in what? Sahih Muslim here. Sahih Muslim 3004. Sahih Muslim 3004. This is where you find this particular hadith I'm talking about. Now, the hadith says, uh, sorry, the hadith narrates, it says, Hadab bin Khalid al-Azdi told us, Hamman narrated to us. Then it says, on the authority of Zaid bin Aslam, on the authority of Atta bin Yasser, Abu Said Khudir reported that Allah's messenger said, now look at this all trash garbage is here. We don't see on the authority of the prophet. We don't see on the authority of God even. We don't see God here. We don't see the, on the authority of, of the prophet himself. We don't see anything like that. We only see on the authority of these imposters. They are all imposters. Now, then they said, Allah's messenger said, we all know the message given to Muhammad as a prophet and a messenger was the Quran. Quran chapter 47 verse 2 bears witness to that. Quran chapter 5 verse 67 also bears witness to that, that the Quran was the only message given to the prophet and the messenger. So now the messenger said, do not write. Do you see? He says, do not write anything from me. And whoever writes from me other than the Quran, he should efface it. That is, he should efface that. Wipe it out. If you write anything other than the Quran from him, right? Wipe, wipe it out. We cannot classify Hadith narrations as the Quran. It's not part of it. The Quran on its own is the Hadith, is the real Hadith as a matter of fact. So if somebody says you are an Hadith rejecter or the Hadith rejecter, just laugh at him 
because the Quran is the authentic and original hadith. So if you call me hadith reject automatically, are you trying to say there is a hadith better than the Quran? No way. I don't reject the Quran. So I should rather be calling the mushriks hadith rejectors because they reject the hadith of the Quran. So the prophet, according to their garbage books, the prophet is saying, do not write anything from me except the Quran, right? Because he said, whoever writes anything from him except the Quran should wipe it out, should efface that. And narrate from me, this narrate from me, if you break it down in hadith, means hadithu. You can say hadithu or hadithu. Narrate from me doesn't mean write hadith from me. Hey, do you see the difference? The, the, the command says, do not write for every intellectual person listening to me. The word write, he told them clearly. La taktubu anni gayral Quran. La taktubu. He says, do not write from me except the Quran, other than the Quran. So, hadith books, the so called garbage hadith books, were they written down? The answer is yes. Are they written down? The answer is yes. So, if they are written down, are they, these people actually listening to the prophet talking or are they deaf and dumb? He says, do not write. Did we see the Quran written down today? Yes, it's written down. We have it today. Why are these garbage hadith books also written down? Who gave them that authority? Now, let, let me tell you how the scholars will play with your conscience. In the same hadith, after he said, do not write anything down other than the Quran. If you write anything, wipe it out, efface it. Then they will go to the last portion of the hadith. And then it says, wa hadithu anni. Hadithu anni, narrate from me, doesn't mean write it down from me. You see how dumb some of the scholars can make you. If I say narrate something from me, doesn't mean I say write it down. When you are narrating something from me, meaning if I have given a command, you can narrate that same command from me to people. Because it's only the Quran which has been permitted to be written down. Nothing else. The devious scholars will try to formulate things and tell you, oh, you know what? Uh, after this time, the prophet gave, because anyways, there are these books are garbage books anyways. I'm not quoting this hadith to tell you I believe in them. No, I'm only telling you the contradictive parts of their hadith books. So if the prophet said, do not write anything from me, that if you write anything, wipe it out, why do we have hadith books today? The reference is Sahih Muslim 3004. Write it down for yourself and go investigate for yourself. As simple as it is. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, Fashnik love Ayub Masa. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, bro. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's let us continue with the topic so that we don't I don't stay too much on one point, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So we see from the hadith books themselves, right? Now, this hadith books, I want to show you who gave how do they put the criteria. And that the criteria they put for defining hadith books doesn't come from the prophet. He didn't authorize it. He doesn't give that permission. So I'm going to play this guy's video, Zakir Naik. Listen to him carefully. He breaks down on the criteria on how they approve hadith books. <laughs> and guys, start laughing with me because it's funny. Listen. There are basically five criteria for hadith to be sahih. Number one, the narrator should be of good character. That means he should be honest, he should be truthful, he should not lie, he should not cheat, he should be of good character. That is the first criteria. Number two, he should be of very good memory so that he can repeat what he has heard of the Prophet. Or according to Ibn Salah, it can also be that what he heard from the Prophet, he remembers it and he writes it down and then if required, he can again read it, even that's accepted. The second category is the memory should be very good. You can repeat it at any time or at least remember it till the time he writes it. The third criteria for hadith to be sahih is that there should be a continuous chain of narrators. 
there should be consistency i cannot say that i heard from my great grandfather if my great grandfather died before i was born how can i say i heard from my great grandfather so there should be a continuous chain of narrator all the narrators should have met each other and personally heard from them the fourth criteria is that there should not be any flaw i'll give you an example of a flaw that two contemporary narrators who lived at the same time if one chain of narrator said that narrator a heard from narrator b and according to the rizal the history we know that these two narrator though they lived at the same time but they never met so how can narrator a heard the hadith from narrator b when they did not meet so this is a flaw so there should not be any flaw and the fifth criteria for hadith to be sahi is that it should not contradict with any other sound hadith any other hadith which is sound which is sahi if it contradicts then it is wrong so it should not contradict with any other sound hadith any other sahi hadith or hasan hadith so there are basically five criteria for hadith to be sahi number 1 the narrator should be of a good character number 2 of good memory number 3 there should be continuity in the chain of narrator the sanad should be there number 4 there should not be irregularities or flaws number 5 it should not contradict any other sound hadith if all the five criteria are met it is called a sahi hadith if there is a slight flaw in any of these then the hadith become hasan but it is accepted it is maqbool hai hazbun allah wa nibal wakil do you see how the scholars are playing with your conscience yeah my sister rashida no problem i will send it to you do you see how the scholars are playing with your conscience he gave five criteria on how hadith becomes sahih go back and ask him where did the prophet define this criteria for them they will quote verses out of context wa ma atakum ar rasul fa khuzuhu wa ma nahakum anhu fantahu chapter 59 verse 7 you hear the mushriks quoting this verse out of context whatever the messenger gives you take it right call this scholar put him one on one and ask him where did the prophet give him this garbage rules five rules of classifying hadith as sahih to be taken where did the prophet give them this permission they don't have it wallahi they don't have it it doesn't exist whoever this needs the video you can inbox me inbox me on my facebook i will send it to you uh sister rashida i will send it to your whatsapp yes i will send it to you now the interesting part why i brought you to this he started giving the criteria the first criteria is that the person shouldn't have uh shouldn't be a liar there shouldn't be a record of lies in his narrations imam bukhari has the biggest collection of hadith ever among all the hadith books imam bukhari right after him comes imam muslim that is a sahih muslim hadith how come the hadith books they reject of sahih bukhari is more than the ones they approve if you ask them those ones why don't you accept they will say oh they are lies we don't believe the prophet can do that but you believe the prophet can marry a ccs girl again afala takilu is the common sense working You believe this same garbage hadith which tells you the prophet marries his sister old girl from the same person whom you reject his other hadith books The person himself Imam Bukhari has rejected a lot of hadith before compiling the ones he thinks is good for you and your scholars came later on to gather them and check which one is sahih which one is daif before approving it for you you took it where does the prophet give this permission they don't have it ask any mushrik where did the prophet give you permission this criteria of sahih hadith where did he himself assign any hadith as sahih the answer is no imam bukhari did he meet the prophet the answer is no imam bukhari was born in the city called bukhara we now call that city uh, that country uzbekistan check the distance of uzbekistan and the modern day saudi arabia where the prophet was bo- uh, was uh, located makkah and madina check the distance between them someone who comes from bukhara is the one now 
the chief of the mushriks who has compiled hadith for you to follow and say those are the guidance after the quran and foolish scholars also telling you the best book after the quran is the garbage hadith hey. <clears throat> the foolishness of religious scholars is worse than the, the what the politicians are doing one line <laughs> okay so now when we say hadith let's go to the quran in order to understand how words work if it's a noun try to find the verbal form of the word the verb form and in arabic we have different types of verbs we have verb form number one number two number three number four and it goes up to ten or sometimes more than ten in the classical arabic right but we have about 10 being used in the, the today in the world. Uh -huh. Like I said, anybody who needs that video, you can inbox me on Facebook. I will send it to you, right? Uh -huh. I will send you the video, inshallah. So the verb forms, if you find a verb form of a noun, of a word, that is what will help you to know the root word of the word, right? So the root word is the word form from where the noun is formed as a verb right same goes with the word sujood same goes with the word salat same goes with the word zakat same goes with every noun you see in the quran you have to find the verb the verbal form on how it's used will give you the hint on what the word means right so as i read from one of the hadiths ah uh, sahih muslim 3004 in that book when he says, La taktubu anni, waman kataba anni gaira le Quran, faliyamuhu wa haddisu anni. So the word haddisu is a, is a verb. And the hadith, hadith he used, will translate it as narrate from me. So the word narrate also, narration can also mean hadith as a noun. But as a verb, you can say narrate, right? So we want to check with the Quran does it add up? Is it intact? Can we use the word hadith as a verb, hadith, to mean narrate, yes or no? But remember, every word form, every verb has multiple meanings, right? Good. So I'm here to help you to do that. Okay, no problem. Bounty killer, no problem. You can leave it later. I will be coming. I will be drawing conclusion on the topic very soon. Then you can ask me that question later. Yeah. So as a verb. It has been used in verb form number two. Verb form number two in the Quran. When we say ha da tha, ha ha da tha, it means to narrate, to talk about something, to discuss. That is a verbal form of the word hadith. The word hadith on its own is a what? It's a noun. But when we say hadatha, it becomes a verb. When we say hadith, it's a verb form number two. Hadith or hadith is a verb form number two. So I'm taking you to the Quran to explain to you how to understand the verbal forms of a word. So when we go to Quran chapter 93, verse 11, Surah Al Dua, right? Surah Dua, chapter 93, verse 11. I'm going to show you how the word hadith as a, as a noun was used as a verb in the Quran so that you understand the formalities and how it evolves by having such multiple right? to make it easy for the discerning listeners. So 93 verse 11, God says, وَأَمَّا بِنِيمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ وَأَمَّا بِنِيمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ And as for the favor of your Lord, then what? Narrate. You can narrate it. You can talk about it. You can discuss it. You see? So it's used in a verbal form number two, verb form number two in the Arabic grammar language. You see, because it has a shadda on top of the dal. 
you see fahadith so it has a shadda the thing like a w on top we call it shadda in arabic so you see the thing like a w on top here so that thing is called shadda you see the arrow i'm using here aha uh -huh. that is the shadda so if you take that one out it becomes the root word haditha or haditha so that becomes to narrate to discuss you know but now it's used as a verb form number two so if i had this same meaning even if it's used in verb form number three number four it, has, it can be used but it will have multiple meanings to describe the same root word you see aha uh -huh. so if i had this here it means to narrate it so god says as for the favor of your lord then what narrate it discuss it talk about it that's what god told the prophet to do in this verse chapter 93 verse 11 then the next verb verbal form is used is in chapter 99 verse 4 chapter 99 verse 4 on how the word hadith has been used Quran or hadith has been used as a verb in the quran ah uh -huh. so let me share the screen again for that particular verse then you see how it's used the verb in order to help you understand the verbal of the word hadith right okay so quran chapter 99 verse 4 so god says yawmaizin to hadithu akhbaraha he's talking about the day of judgment and what will happen that is the earthquake of the day of judgment right right that is that chapter chapter 99 so verse 4 says on that day to hadithu akbaraha on that day huh? it will talk about it will bring about it will narrate it's what news akbar is like a report it's news or report so on that day, the day of judgment, the earthquake will bring its own information of what is going to ha happen or what is happening. You will see it happening. So it will bring about, it will talk about, it will narrate its own thing. You understand? For instance, if you put maize, in order you want to make popcorn and you put maize in a popcorn machine, then somebody asks you, what is going to happen? You, what will you say? You just say, just wait and see what will happen. It will, it will talk, it will explain to you itself, or it will talk to you by itself. You see what it will, it will do. So then you start seeing it popping. Pop, 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 pop. So we call it popcorn. You see, so you see it's happening. So that means it is explain, it is conversing with you, or discussing it to you, or talking it to you about, or bringing it about to you. So you see, it has a verb. Here gives you another meaning of the word hadith as a verb, right? Good. So the last one, we can find it in Quran chapter 2, verse 76, right? And how it was used, it says, and when they meet those who believe, they say, we have believed. But when some of them retreat to others, they say, Atu hadithu nahum. You see how it is used in chapter 2, verse 76. Atu hadithu nahum. You see? Will you narrate to them? Will you discuss with them? Will you talk to them about what God has disclosed to you so that they can argue with you about it in front of their Lord? Will you do not reason? So Quran chapter 2 verse 76. The word hadith is used in a verbal form but as a question. At whom? You see? Aha. So it can be translated as Will you narrate to them? Will you discuss to them? Will you converse with them? Will you talk about uh, talk to them about you know? Then it keeps going. So it will it can have multiple meanings to suit the verbal form. That is the root word of the word hadith. So now, when it is used as a noun, if you go to Quran chapter twenty verse nine, where it says Al Ataka Adisul Musa. Al-Ataka Adisu Musa, Quran chapter 20, verse 9. Has the hadith of Musa reached you? Quran chapter 20, verse 9. Has the discourse, has the discussion 
as the narration of Moses reached you. So you see the root word and the and the and the noun on how they are used in the Quran, right? So Quran chapter 20, verse 9, it gives you the noun. That is in Arabic, we say ism. That is the ism, that is a noun of the word hadith. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. So when we say hadith, that is the verbal form. But when we say what? Hadith, that is the noun. Quran chapter 12, verse 111. God says, it is not a fabricated hadith. You see, the story of Yusuf, alayhi salam, when you start reading from chapter 12, verse 1, downwards to 111, God told you that the story, the hadith you just read concerning Joseph, is not a fabricated hadith. Unlike the fabricated hadith of the mushriks, the Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, Jami al tirmidhi Abu Dawood, Sunan ibn Nisa, all those garbages, they are fabricated hadith. You see, then again, chapter 51, verse 24, concerning the guests, the honorable guest of Abraham, we see the word hadith is used as a noun to mean the narration, the discussion, the, the what, the, 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 the conversation, we can say. You see, Quran chapter 51, verse 24. Then, chapter 88, verse 1, talks about the resurrection. Hal ataka adisul gashia. As the adis of the gashia, the resurrection reached you. Then when you read the whole chapter, chapter 88, verse 1, you read up to downwards. It tells you concerning the hadis, the narration, the discussion, the discourse concerning the resurrection. You see how to understand a word form in the Quran. You have to look for the verbal forms. You have to look for the nouns and how it's used in the context is used. Then you can know the multiple meanings of a particular word based on how it's used as a verb. Do you see? Good. Now, if I take you to Quran chapter 39 verse 23, let's go and see the best hadith. So that we know when somebody says you are an hadith rejecter, just laugh at him and tell him you believe in hadith. Don't say you don't agree and say I reject hadith. You don't reject hadith. And I'm going to help you to understand the, the point of argument in this. When somebody says you are an hadith rejecter or the hadith rejectors, just laugh and tell them we are not hadith rejectors. We actually believe in the hadith. So now the person will be specific. And tell you, oh, really? Do you believe in the hadith? Then you tell me, yes, I believe in the hadith. So now he will start breaking it down to say, okay, so you do you believe in Sahih Bukhari? Then you say, aha, I got you. That's when you tell him, aha, I get you. Sahih Bukhari, who gave you Sahih Bukhari? Then they start stammering. Uh, uh, they are the sayings of the prophet. Okay, where did the prophet say, Sahih Bukhari is my sayings? Uh, uh, so you don't believe in Hadith? They, they start asking you. I ask you a question. Where did the Prophet say, Sahih Bukhari is my Hadith? Uh, are you also a Quraniyun? Brother, that is not the question. <laughs> uh, Quran chapter 13 verse 23. <laughs> Let's see what the verse is, right? Good. Chapter 39, verse 23. God says, Allah nazzal ala ahsan al hadith. Kitab al mutashabihan, Mathania taksha irru minhu juludu al lazina yakshawna rabbahu. Thumma talinu juluduhum wa kulubuhum ila zikirullahi. Zalika huda allahi yadi bihi man yasha. Woman yidilullah. Now, this is as simple as A, B, C, D. God, Allah, is saying Allah has revealed the best hadith. Now, the word hadith, which is a noun, comes with a marifa in Arabic, which is a definite article. So God says God has revealed the best hadith. So that there you see al-hadith is a definite article. Even if we leave the word hadith untranslated, 
you you and i already know what it means it means narration it means discussion it means discourse do you see so you just watched the video you saw what mumtaz say he's i think it's a pakistan you heard what he said he's an hadith follower by the way they are confused mushriks <laughs> wallahi they are confused uh yes exactly god is on our side to change us yes brother yeah sister benish yes it's funny it's funny as hell wallahi uh, yes abdul sama they have a chance they have a choice to change that's their choice they want to remain blood followers so good luck to them uh <laughs> exactly he wants us to be blind followers and it goes against the quran quran chapter 17 verse 36 says Wala ma in. do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge about and then you have, don't have knowledge about this and you are blindly followers of this uh, yeah they are stupid on camera for a fact <laughs> Okay, uh, Robert Jones says, I wonder why can't all Muslims to keep the one, the only, the holy Quran and make this deen very simple as Christians choose only Bible? That is a question for the Mushriks to answer. <laughs> oh, were you, were you, were you, were you? Blind followers. Hmm. I refuse to be a blind follower. No, I can't. That's the dumbest thing ever to do. The dumbest thing ever to do, a blind follower. I would rather be a follower with two eyes than to be a blind follower of garbages. Subhanallah. <laughs> hey, Mujirikanga. Oh, no, 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 no. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, uh, fashion love. Let me see what he said. Oh, ah, okay, yeah. He says, Our parents were misled and they raised us on the same road. But Alhamdulillah, it's not late for you, for you because we are learning every day. Our eyes are opening now. Yes, actually, our eyes are opening. And thank God for his guidance, right? uh yes they are, uh, yeah dex dexter says blind followers and empty barriers yes they are empty barriers and they make the most noise yeah uh, robert jones says you have a choice choose the only quran yes yes uh, sister benish we have a choice we got a choice alhamdulillah okay let's continue so quran chapter 39 verse 23 right where god says allah nazal al ahsan al hadith right then he says, Kitab al Mutashabihan, Mathania Takshairu, Takshairu, Minhu Jiludu, Lazina Yashona Rabahum, Thumma Talinu Jiluduhum, Wakulubuhum, Elazikirla. Zalika Huda Lai, Yadi Bihi Mayesha. Then he says, Woman Yidulu Lahu, Fama Lahu Min Had. So the verse is just simply telling us that God, that is Allah, has revealed the best hadith, the best discourse, the best narration, the best discussion, the best. You, Define it however you want. <laughs> I don't care. So far as it's al-hadith in Arabic, right? Then it says a book. So the hadith becomes a book because that all the hadith you need can be found in the book of God. So the hadith of Musa is there. The hadith of Ibrahim is there. The hadith of Yusuf is there. The hadith of uh, uh, the resurrection is there. Hadith of Muhammad himself is there. For instance, read chapter 66 verse 1. And see when God warned him. Ya you and Nabi Lima to Harim Ma Ahalla Laka Tapta Gimardata Azwajika Wallau Gafur Rahim. He made law fools for himself and he forbid he forbid something which God has made lawful for him to seek the satisfaction of his wives. You don't need to be the very, very intelligent to understand what is going on. This is about his personal life that he did something wrong and God is warning him. That is an hadith because God is telling us the narration of what has hap happened. And God is warning him because he doesn't say, oh, you believers. He says, oh, you the prophet. So this is his personal thing. And it's a hadith. He's there. Quran chapter 33, verse 50. Read downwards to 59. It talks about the prophet. 
and how God has made his wife lawful to him. And God has, uh, uh, has actually told him how to let his wife and the, his daughters dress. Everything is there concerning the prophet. What else do you need? Quran chapter 33 verse, uh, I think 53, tells you how to come to the house of the prophet and how when you are invited to come and eat, don't sit down and talk anyhow you want. Don't sit down for a discussion, hadith. What do you have to do? When you eat, you leave. Don't even go and talk to his wife. If you want to talk to the wife, there's a way to do that. And this is all hadith about the prophet. This is a this conversation narration about the prophet. It's in the Quran. So that is why God takes the Quran as the best hadith. Because he knows the mushriks will form books out there and call it hadith as well. And those hadith, they say, are also books. That's why Sahih Bukhari, you find it in the garbage books. Sahih Muslim, you find it in the garbage books. Jamia Tirmidhi, you find it in the garbage books. And they sell it and it's more expensive than the Quran. Guess what? A garbage being expensive than the Quran to buy. I would rather buy the Quran for 1,000 euros if I have money to do that than to go and buy garbage books. Somebody was telling me he even have to go to the extent just to find a, a special Hadith book in the olden days. He has to take about almost 400 euros to buy that book. I'm like, what? Hasbunallah, what do you want to Aha, so God has revealed the best discourse. A book similarly repeating when you take the story of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, you find it repeated in different chapters. You take the story of Musa alayhi salam, you find it repeated in other chapters. You find the story of Ibrahim, you find it repeated. Similarly repeating by talks about a lot of things. Then God says, the skins of those who fear their Lord shiver day off. It shivers from the verses of God being recited to you being spoken to you, being discussed to you, being narrated to you. This is what we call the hadith. How can I be a rejecter of the best hadith? Are you nuts? Are you, are you dumb? Are you foolish? You call me the hadith rejecter when I have the best book to follow and you have garbages and you are proud of the garbages you are following? Afalata <laughs> kilu. Aha. Then it goes, thus their skins uh, and their hearts soften to the remembrance of Allah, of God. Soften to the remembrance of Allah. Because the verses of God are being recited to you and you get the remembrance of God thereof. The remembrance of Allah, you get it from the book. So they are being recited to you. They are being narrated to you. It's being discussed to you. It's being talked about to you. So it's your their hearts, their skins, and their hearts soften to the remembrance of God. That is where we got the zikr Allah from. That is the guidance of God. Remember, Chapter 2, verse 2 says, Zalik al kitabu la raiba fi hudan lil muttaqin. That is the book where in there is no doubt as guidance for those who are pious. So that is the guidance of God by which he guides whomever we wills. You see the, the hadith of God. The best hadith God has sent us is a book. And this same book is the guidance of God by which God guides whomever he wills. As for one whom God leaves astray like the mushriks, then he will have no guide. Who is your guide? Sahih Bukhari. Wallah, you are the dumbest fool ever. I think the books of Sahih Bukhari will guide you. You will see the mushrik telling you, Wallahi, if you believe in only the Quran, you are astray. If you don't believe in the garbage books we believe in, you ask, what? <laughs> A book which is promoting pedophilia, I should go and believe in that before, I, before God will accept my faith. Are you nuts? <laughs> Hey, Aha. So apart from that, I take you to Quran chapter 52, verse 34. Let's see what, what God says in that verse. Right? Chapter 52, verse 34. Then I'll share the screen and let's see the question God is asking concerning hadith. Right? So I've told you when somebody calls you a hadith rejecter. Just start laughing at 
don't get offended just laugh <laughs> tell them no i'm not an hadith i don't reject the hadith so they oh so you believe in the hadith you just say yes then they will say okay so you believe in sahih bukhari and aha uh -huh. then you say aha uh -huh. i knew you would go there sahih bukhari who gave you sahih bukhari then he will start saying ah they are the sayings and actions of the prophet says who was that what the prophet said the answer is no they don't have it in any book where prophet himself says they are the sins and actions of myself i'm serious they don't have it so quran chapter 52 verse 34 faliyatu bi hadithin mitlihi in kanu swadikid because we have already seen god says he has revealed the best hadith ahsan al hadith so if the quran is the ahsan al hadith god is now putting forth a challenge then he says, then let them bring a hadith, a hadith like it, mithlihi. This mithlihi, like it, the it at the end, the domir, the pronoun is a masculine pronoun attributing to the book, attributing to the Quran. So then let them bring a hadith like it. Can you compare your garbage, Sahih Bukhari books, books with the Quran? The answer is no. Can we compare that garbage, Sahih Muslim, to the Quran? The answer is no. Then how can you foolishly say that they are equal? How? Why will you foolishly say they are equal? Oh, for people who don't know, yeah, most of the scholars are saying they are equal. Yeah, they will tell you the Hadith and the Quran are equal. Yes. They say the prophet will say, I was giving something, I was giving the Quran and something similar to it. <laughs> Ask them what is this? They will say the hadith, the sunnah. <laughs> the sunnah, according to them, is the same hadith because that is where you find the sunnah from, the hadith books, the garbage books. So, Quran chapter 52, verse 34 If you should be truthful, if they should be truthful, let them bring it. We are waiting. Yes, everything which is not from God is full of contradiction. Yes, I agree. Muti, muti of sin. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So again, we have already seen the best hadith is the Quran. If anybody challenges, let them bring a hadith like the Quran. They don't have it. Ask any mushrik, is there any hadith like the Quran? They will again answer you and say no. Then why do you want me to follow your garbage hadith? They will say, oh, it is the explanation of the Quran. Is that what God says? Is that what the Quran, prophet himself, is that what he tell you? That Sahih Bukhari books are his the explanation of the Quran. Is that what he said? The answer is no. Again, when you go to Quran chapter 4, verse 87, God says, Woman as the kumina lai haditha. Chapter 4, verse 87. Woman as the kumina lai haditha. And who is truthful? Who is more truthful than God in hadith? So I already showed you the verbal form of the word hadith. Hadith is a noun. So God says, woman as the kumin and lie hadith, and who is more honest or who is more truthful than God in hadith? That is hadith, to narrate, to discuss, to talk about something, to, to converse with about something. Who is more truthful? Nobody. So even if the mushriks are telling you, oh, hadith here doesn't mean, tell them, give me the meanings of hadith. They don't have it. <laughs> For people who have my PDF concerning refer to the Quran, I have a, a book I made, right? It's called Refer to the Quran. It tells you everything about the Quran and how to refer to the Quran for guidance, right? And the, the, the hard copy will be available before the end of this month, inshallah, for ordering, right? The hard copy, the hard cover will be available before the end of this month, inshallah. So you count on it. By the 1st of June, it should be available for ordering online and you can get your copy it leads you to the Quran and helps you to understand the Quran in a better way and better fashion, right? Mm -hmm.
<laughs> I get all the prostitutes will start doing the same. <laughs> so all the pro prostitutes out there, they will start looking for dogs to give them water. I think it's, a, it's the easiest way to go to Jannah. <laughs> Allah disenga. Ya salam la wala Abu Bakar salam. Okay, let's go on. Quran chapter 45 verse 6 to verse 8. Right? I will share the screen let's see. Quran chapter 45 verse 6 to verse 8. So we have all seen what the best hadith is and the challenge God put forth is let them bring a hadith like it if they should be truthful or if they are honest. Right? Are they honest? The answer is no. They are not honest. Right? Good. And we all know they will fail. They can't bring an hadith like the Quran or a hadith like the Quran. They can't. They can never do that. Right? Uh -huh. So I'm going to put this verse. Let me share the screen. Exactly. They are promoting prostitution. <laughs> uh, no problem, Abdul Jalil. You are welcome. You can re-watch the program later and you get to understand what whatever was being uh, said or discussed. So I take you to Quran, chapter 45, verse 6 to verse 8, right? Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's see what the verse says, right? Oops. Okay. So he says, Tilika ayatul lahi natuluha alayka bil haq. Fabi ayi hadisi bada lahi wa ayati yuminu. Waili lukuli afakin athim. Yes, mau ayati lahi tutula alayhi. Thumma yusiru mustakbiran. Ka alam yes maha. Faba shiruhu bi azaban alim. Now, this is the simplicity of these verses I'm re reciting to you or reading to you. God says these are the verses, the ayat, the signs of God, the ayat. Natluha, natluha alayka bil haq, which we recite to you in truth or with the truth. The verses of God, which we recite to you, Muhammad, alayhi salam, because he was the second person pronoun who received the Quran. Then God says, Fabi ayi hadithin. And in which hadith? Because God knows they have created other hadith for themselves. Right? So no matter how they grade their own hadith, as this is Sahih, this is Da'if, this is Hassan, this is Kudusi, this is whatever they want to call it. That is why God put his own up above all of them. Ahsan al-Hadith, the best hadith. So for bi ayi hadithin, bad Allahi, because the main reason why God mentioned God himself and then mentioned his verses because it's a combination. He's not saying only verses because then people will even bring the Bible and other things and say, hey, here are the verses of God here. So God is mentioning himself with his verses. You can't separate his verses away from him. It is his. So, so in which hadith? After God and his verses, Will they believe? Because if these are the verses of God being recited to Muhammad in truth, are you expecting Muhammad to bring other than the verses of God to the people for them to believe? After telling them in their own had, had, garbage hadith books, Sahih Muslim 3004, do not write anything from me except the Quran. If you write anything from it, uh, from me, efface it. He said, wipe it out. Then you think this prophet will come to the people and then tell them to come and believe in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim after the Quran. Will he do that? Verse 7. Woe to every sinful liar. We all know the sinful liars, the blind followers. You already had one of them. We have no choice but to be blind followers. Are you a fool? There are a lot of choices God has put in front of you and you are fooling yourself being blind. Are you dumb? And you call yourself scholars? 
Verse 8. He hears the verses of God. Tutula alayhi. Be recited to him, just like I'm doing now. Thumma yusirru mustakbiran. Then he insists arrogantly. Ka'allam yasmaha. As if he has not heard the verses. You have a choice. And you want to remain a blind follower of following garbages. Listening to the verses of God being recited to you. You insist arrogantly you want to be a mushrik who follow garbage books. For bi azab and alim. Give him news of a painful punishment. And you are getting that. You will get the good news of a painful punishment. So God is asking you, in which hadith after God and his verses will they believe? Now I have the verses of God being recited to me. Why should I go and believe in some garbages? And you sit down, classify it as sahih. The prophet has no idea about it. He never met Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari came about 200 years after the prophet. How? How? Then again, I take you to Quran chapter 31, verse 6 to verse 7. I'm almost bringing the topic to an end. Maybe I will give the chance for one or two callers. I take you to Quran chapter 31, right? Verse 6 to verse 7. That is Surah to Luqman, right? Verse 6 to verse 7. And I'm going to tell you how the mushriks always mistranslate this verse to put music there. Right? Most of the time you hear them saying idle talk. <laughs> Ask any Arabians, how do you call music in Arabic language? Does it mean hadith? The answer is no. So I'm going to bring it to that to that instance. Quran chapter 31, verse 6 to verse 7. Right? Good. Let me share the screen. Quran chapter 31, verse 6 to verse 7. Now God is talking about mankind in general because we have all types of people on earth. You see the similarities in this verse with the chapter 45, verse 6 to verse 8. But I'm going to break it down to show you the, the difference here. So God says, among the people is one who what? Yesterday, who exchange or buys, who, who purchases. The, when we say lahawa, is something which causes you diversion. It is like entertainment, amusement. It distracts you. So, lahawal hadith. So, you see the hadith here is mentioned in the definite article form. Because the mushriks, they, has, they have also classified their hadith as the hadith. That is why they are calling you the one who follow the best hadith as the hadith rejecter. You hear that most of the times. They call you the one following the best hadith, which is the Quran. They call you the hadith rejectors. So this is the lawal hadith. So they purchase, they purchase that, they buy that, they exchange that because this, this is what they want. Then God says, "Liyudulla an sabilillahi bigayril ilm." So that hadith they have, it's to mislead them, to stray them away from the way of God. Without what knowledge, because if they have knowledge, they will not follow those garbages. Because they don't have knowledge. Then they will say, oh, my scholar said, my scholar said, my scholar said. That is why none of them can prove whatever they see from the Hadith books. They don't have knowledge. Ask any Muslim around you who is a mainstream Muslim, who is a Sunni, Shia, Tijaniya. Whenever they say something in Islam, tell them to prove it. They don't have knowledge. Wallah, I'm not joking to you. They cannot prove it. They will say, oh, don't worry, I hear. I'll bring you the answer tomorrow. You will never see them again. When you ask them again, they get angry. So, You 
You see? And they take such things, such things they have from the hadith, as what? In mockery. As a, like, they take it, they accept it. When we say, yatakhiza, takhaza means to, to, to carry on something, to take something, to accept something. And they accept it. When they, the hadith tells them the prophet married six years old girl, they accept it. When the hadith tells them the prophet sleep with nine or eleven women in one night, they accept it. When the hadith tells them that the prophet says, oh, a time will come, somebody with a big belly will be sitting on the couch and he will tell you, follow the Quran alone. They accept those garbages. <laughs> oh, what I want to say. Then God says, Ulaika lahum azabun muhim. Those are the ones who will have what? A humiliating punishment. Why will they have humiliating punishment? God says in verse 7, Wa iza tutula alayhi ayatuna. And when our verses are recited to him, Walla mustakbiran. Then he turns away arrogantly, like the mushriks who always do that. Ka'allam yesmaha, as if he has not heard the verses be recited to him. Ka'anna fi uzinaihi wakra, as if there, there is deafness in his two ears. Uzinaihi, you see, is naihi, his two ears, as if there is deafness inside. For Bashiru bi azabin alim. Give him news of a painful punishment. That's the Mushriks, the Ali Sunnah, the Shia, the Tijaniya, the Ahmadiyya. Those are the ones who carry the law al Hadith. They will have a painful punishment, Mushrikai. Wallahi, thank God for taking me out of those garbage uh, lives, of following garbage books. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Hey, so I'm bringing you to the last verse, which is in Quran chapter 6, verse 112 to 113, to show you the position of the what? The mushriks who always uphold dirty books, garbage books, and attribute it to the prophet. And I tell you, they are the enemies of the prophet. So when they call you hadith rejected, just laugh at them. Just laugh. Just say, me, I'm not hadith reject. I believe in hadith. They will get confused. They will say, ah, I thought you are a Quran alone follower. Then you tell them, no, I'm not a hadith rejecter. Wallahi, wallahi, I believe in hadith. And then they will say, ah, so you believe in hadith. I thought you always are a Quran alone follower. Don't go with their flow. Just twist the narrative. Just tell them, I believe in the best hadith. They will say, aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so do you believe in Sahih Bukhari? Then you tell them, aha, you see, which book is Sahih Bukhari? Then they will say, oh, they are the sayings and attributes of the prophet and his companions. Then you ask him, did the prophet give you that book? He will start saying, oh, so you don't believe in the sunnah? You see, they will start answering your questions with a question. Now they, will, they are not in the position to start answering you. Huh? You see what they do? And this is why when I call them out, they are scared. They always insult me. They cannot face me. Wallahi, wallahi. They can't even answer my questions. So they deviate, they turn my questions around. <laughs> my phone number is always there for them. But they are scared. Okay, let's deal with the last verse before I end. Uh, I give one or two questions to be answered. Yeah, Abdul, Abdul Jali, tell him he should keep bleeding. The mushriks, that's how they bleed. They bleed so much. Uh, Lawal Abu Bakr, yes. Thank you to me. May God reward you for that. Uh, thank you, Fatima Chin. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, Sister Benish, that is what they are good at. They answer question with a question. They don't. They never want to answer a question, but they will always tell you, "Answer me, answer me." They think they are in charge. How can a Muslim be in charge of me? Chapter six, verse one hundred and twelve to one hundred and thirteen. God is going to show us the secrets of the Mushriks. They are the enemies of the Prophet. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا شَيَاتِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوهِي بَعْدُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْدٍ زُكْرَ فَالْقَوْلِ الْقُرُورَ 
ولو شاء الله ولو شاء ربك ما فعلوه ها ما فعلوه فزرهم وما يفترون Then God says, وَلِتَسْغَى إِلَيْهِ آفِدَةُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ وَلِيَرْدَوُ وَلِيَبْتَرُفُوا مَا هُمْ مُكْتَرُفُونَ Now what is the verse telling us? God says, and likewise, we have made for every prophet enemies. Huh? That is what? Devils of what? Genes and humans. We have devils among the genes. And we have devils among the humans, right? Inspiring to each other the decoration of delusive speech or delusive statements. Just like they have the Hadith book. They are delusive. They are decorated. You see how they decorate them? They make some Kudisi. They make some Sahih. They make some Hassan. They make some uh, Da'if. That's how they decorate them. You see? Then God says, Walausha Rabbuka, if your Lord had willed, you Muhammad, had your Lord willed, they, they will not have done it. Ma fa'alu. So God intentionally left it to be done because He wants to differentiate between the hypocrites, the mushriks, and the believers. So I'm continue. Let's see how the verse continues. Then God says, Fazaruhum, so leave them. Do you see why we need to leave the mushriks? Stay away from them. Leave them what my afternoon with what they fabricate. Leave them and what they fabricate. So leave them. Allow them to follow their, mush uh, their garbage books. But to me, they are garbages. I don't need them. I have the best at it. Why would I even go and put my nose in the garbage book when I have the best book, the Quran? Then God says, Walitazga ilayhi afidatu lazina la yuminuna bil akhira. Huh? So that those who do not believe in the hereafter will incline to it. In order to approve it, they are the ones who approve the garbage books who tells them the prophet married CCSO girl. Ask them, was it the prophet who approved that book? The answer is no. Who approved it? They approve it because they are the enemies. It is happening among the genes and the humans. And those are the mushriks. Go to Quran chapter 6, verse 121. You will understand why I call them mushriks. Because they are inspired by the devils to argue with you. When you obey them, you also become a mushrik. Then God says, وَلِيَكْتَرِفُ مَا هُمْ مُكْتَرِفُونَ And they will commit what they are committing. Whatever you see them committing is the act of the Hadith books they are following. That is why they hate you, the Quran follower. That is why they hate you to death and they would rather hug a Christian and kiss a Christian than to, keep, to be next to you. <laughs> you. Do you understand? So that is how the mushriks are. Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. So these are the enemies of the prophet. The ones who told you he married a CCS girl. I went to a, 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 a scholar in my country went to the extent to say the prophet's wife drank his urine. He narrated it to the people and they were saying, Allah Akbar. They were excited hearing those garbage stories. Let me catch your scholars. No wonder they are scared of me. Talking about me on radio stations and platforms with, with, with how will I say, with grief. They are, <laughs> they are crying. Step on my two toes and see how I will deal with your scholar. Mushriks. Can't you see your scholars running? Enemies of the prophet. And you are here calling us the hadith rejected. Are you a fool? The Quran and your garbage books, which one is the best hadith? Is it your garbage books or is it the Quran? So if the Quran is the best hadith, why are you calling us as this rejectors when you are the one rejecting the best hadith? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last part of the topic concerning the hadith rejectors. They call you the Hadith rejectors, turn it around, just say you are rather the Hadith rejectors. Tell them you don't reject the Hadith. They will say, oh, so you believe in all the Hadith? Yes, the best Hadith. I, I believe in all the Hadith. That is the best Hadith, the Quran. You understand? Because the Quran, you, can, you cannot believe in part of the Quran and, and disbelieve in part of the Quran. So I believe in all the Hadith. That is the Quran. <laughs> then they will start saying, oh, I taught you a Quran alone follow. I taught you a Quran alone. 
Oh, you thought so? Oh, no, no, no. Me, I, I'm not a, uh, uh, this. I don't reject hadith. I'm not hadith rejecter. So now you say, okay. So you believe in Sahih Bukhari? Oh, then you say, aha. Which book is that? You know, so uh, they are the sayings of the prophet. Oh, prophet gave you a book called Sahih Bukhari? You see? Aha. You see? Uh, Ajayi, Ajayi Olua says, uh, but many have argued that the words that words that are not clear are properly explained by the hadith. Give me example. Actually, they don't have one hadith book which explains the Quran from Fatiha to Anas. They don't have it. If any scholar is listening, let let him find me for a dialogue. Call me on his platform. I'll come. Let him prove to me the hadith book they have. Hadith book. They have which explains Fatiha to Anas from verse to verse till the end. They don't have it. Wallahi. I'll stop being a Muslim if any scholar in the world can take up this challenge and prove it to me. I'll stop being a Muslim. Wallahi. I'll stop being a Muslim. And you can give me 100 lashes, put me on the table and bring it on live TV and give me 100 lashes in front of everybody. I'll take it. And I'll stop being a Muslim. They lack logic. Ladies and gentlemen, let me put my phone number. Whoever is willing to call and ask a question, you can call. And also my YouTube channel uh, is available. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. It's there below the page. You see it? YouTube.com slash Bush 29. You find all my videos, all my lectures. Lectures about the Salat, Zakat, Hajj, uh, Siam, uh, whatever you know, free will. Uh, the devil, God, anything you want to know is there. Uh -huh. And not monetize my channel. It's there for you. You can watch without any advertisement. Watch it. Get your knowledge, the knowledge you want. Right? Uh -huh. There are scholars are there begging people for followers on YouTube. I don't understand why they are doing that. They would rather tell me I'm here for money, but what are they doing? Your scholars on, on social medias like TikToks and other things. What are they doing there? <laughs> I thought they were supposed to remain in the mosque and preach to you. What are your scholars doing on social media? And then you come here, oh, Baba Shrib is looking for attention. Are you nuts? What are your scholars doing on social media? <laughs> they are looking for what? No attention. <laughs> your scholars are begging for viewers. Somebody is asking, please, is there shit sit the shawal in the Quran? No, it's not. There's nothing like sit the shawal in the Quran. It is a concept from the hadith books. If you are doing that, go to the Imam Bukhari to pay you that. God never asked you to do that. Uh, Ajahi says, the only hadith they have always reference has always been Sahih Bukhari. Yeah, mostly, mostly they use Sahih Bukhari for their everything. Because that is the most popular hadith they have and which has a large number of hadith books. That's why they use Sahih Bukhari. But it's full of contradictions, lies, not approved by the Prophet himself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much, Abdul Samad. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me see. The phone number is there. Anybody who wants to call and ask a question, I have just a few minutes, two minutes maybe to drop because I'm almost two hours. So I can do that in just a few minutes. You can call that up number down there. It's passing down there. You can call or you just drop your question in the comment section. I'll just answer you, right? Uh, yeah, Lamin Muhammad Salam, bro. Peace be upon you. Uh, 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 Muti Muti Fuseni is saying something. Let me see. Ah, yes, that's Quran chapter 25, verse 33. Yeah, God has brought the best tafsir, which is the Quran. So the Quran on its own is the best tafsir. You don't need Ibn Kathir. You don't need Ibn Abbas. You don't, you, you don't need any garbage to tell you that it's 
it's explaining the Quran. I thought the Mushrik says the Prophet is the one explaining the Quran. So if that is the case, where is the tafsir of Prophet Muhammad himself? We, they don't have it. So if you don't, know, you don't have it, how come you have Ibn Kathir, Ibn Abbas, Ibn whatever, whatever garbages you have? Does it make sense? Common sense? No. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Musa Arabogo. You are welcome. I appreciate uh, that. Right? Uh -huh. That motivates me to do more, to help people to understand the Quran in a better sense. Uh huh. So for those who want to know why I do what I'm doing, go to Quran chapter 7, verse 181. Quran chapter 7, verse 181. Right? Among the people God has created, they are the ones who guide with the truth, and by it they do justice. <laughs> You got to keep up with the Quran. Inazwa kaji. Inakari inazwa. Shemu shemu buga pe. Kaji. Ngosula pipi. Okay. Yeah, yes. I appreciate that uh, Sharif Karim. Yes. Praise be to God. He sends you to open our eyes and save us from imposters sinful lies. Yes. That's that's what I'm here to do. And I said I will never stop till the scholars respond and when they respond that's their end. I will end their career, seriously, if they don't stop the line. Uh, I'm hoping for it, Ajayi. I'm hoping for them to, to come forward. Most of them are scared, so they insult me. They just throw insults on the back channel. Yes, fine. If, if, if somebody claims they are learned and they start throwing insults, I don't take them seriously. If they are man enough, my inbox is there. They can inbox me and say, hey, brother, I want you to bring you, I want to bring you on my channel or I want to come on your channel to face you. Fine, I'll accept, right? Publicly insulting me before trying to interact. No, if somebody tried to interact with me and the first statement from them is an insult against me, I don't answer that. I don't answer that. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think my time is up now uh, the, i've answered some few questions no call came so far uh, i think i will drop the topic for now so that people can get to watch because it's two hours two hours is adequate is enough for people to actually grasp whatever i've discussed about right anything i said is based on the quran justified with proofs with evidences right uh, let me see there's a question being asked let me see uh salam brother how to counter argument that the sectarians say that the companions used to the companions used to memorize the quran and it was them who helped them to compile the quran so in that sense why can we believe that the saying of the prophet since they were the companions of the uh it's a good question Based on your question, Quran chapter 25, verse 5 to verse 6, right? Quran chapter 25, verse 5 to verse 6. The disbelievers, the kafirs at the time of Muhammad, uh, even them, they know that Prophet Muhammad wrote down the verses of the Quran. They know, and they said it, that Prophet Muhammad wrote the verses of the Quran. And they were dictated to him morning and evening. They know that. And God never said they are lying. Verse 6 only said it was revealed by God. Even though it's revealed by God, Prophet Muhammad wrote it at his time. Quran chapter 96, verse 1 to verse 5, also bears testifies to that action that he was taught by the pen. Muhammad never knew how to read and write in the past, according to Quran chapter 29, verse 48. But then God taught him. Yalam. He never knew that, and God taught him how to do that. So how can anybody say the Quran was memorized at the time of Muhammad and later on written when he was not there? So, oh my God. Put that story, those stories aside. They are not from, from God. <laughs> he wrote the Quran at his time. Somebody will say, where is the copy that he wrote? Are you nuts? Something which was inspired to the prophet by God. God will cause somebody to inherit it the same way. It can be inspired again to be written down. 
So Quran chapter 35, verse 31 to 32, gives credence to that. Right? God will cause his servants to inherit the book, whether by inspiration, whether by any means possible. The same God who chose an Arabian who cannot read and write and God taught him can choose anybody from the part of the world to repeat the Quran to him and it can be written down without any mistakes, anything. I hope you understand that point, uh, brother Destin. Uh, Alan. Yeah, you're welcome, Lamin Mohammed. Uh, Lawal Abu Bakr, yes, the, the Sunni scholars, who they, they like their position more than the truth, so they will never face me. They are scared. Uh, He says, what's your take on uh, kafara during Ramadan for someone who deliberately sleep with his wife during the day because a preacher said Quran never mentioned that. When we say kafara, if you, uh, Quran chapter 2 verse 184, God says, uh, wa ala yuti ta'amin miskin. If you struggle to do the siyam, uh, the abstinence, if you struggle to do it, God says you should ransom by feeding the poor person. But to fast is better for you. So if I'm struggling due to hunger or due to the weather, sun is not setting, or due to the lust you have for your women, just ransom. If I'm a good, good believer, I would rather keep the fasting and break it at the right time. You understand? There is nothing like a fara. Oh, you have to fast, you have to fast six months, uh, two months consecutive. No, no, Ahi, it's not there. Remember Quran chapter 22 verse 78. Who min haraj. He is the one who has chosen you and has not placed any difficulty upon you in the religion. So why make things difficult for yourself? God is not forcing people to fast. He is only talking to believers. Chapter 2 verse 183. He only gave you the siyam so that you can practice how to be pious. That is it. So if you want to be pious, do it. If you can't, is it forcing you? No, you ransom by feeding a poor person. That is enough. That's up to you. Uh, Daniel Abbas says, what is the hikmah? The hikmah, you can find it in Quran chapter 17. Start reading from verse 22 to verse 39, where he says, Right? Right? Aha, uh -huh. so God, this is what God, that is from what God has inspired to you of the word, al-hikmah. So al-hikmah, if you just translate it as just the wisdom, you limit the word. So al-hikmah, sometimes leave it untranslated, check from chapter 17, read from verse 22 up to verse 39, you get the concept of the hikmah. It is in the Quran, it's not outside the Quran. Remember, Yasin wal Quran al-Hakim, the Quran itself is a wise book, so it's a full of wisdom. The evidence is in Quran chapter 44, verse 1 to verse 6. You see it there. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sharif Karim. Thank you. I appreciate the support. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, two hours. I've done 10 minutes over my question and answer time. I think I've answered enough questions. Now my family time, I have to go. Uh, thank you very much for the time and the support. I appreciate the support. And let's study more find evidences to study more, build our faith on evidences and proof. What you don't know, don't follow it. Is that the Amma is a fool? Wassalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.